And we're working in radians. Actually, that's the negatives. So 2.011 sounds good. And they're going to move this 1.578 to the other side. So. Okay, so we have our first potential answer for phi. But like I said, we have this equation right here. So why don't we apply this relationship to this equation right above it and see what we get. So yes, let's apply that. So since the cos of theta is the cos of negative theta, we'll make whatever is inside the bracket negative. So Okay, and then I'm going to switch sides here. So Okay, we already have the cos inverse of negative 0.427, that was 2.01. And then now we move the negative 1.5 over here. so we get a r another result for our another possible result for our phase angle so which one of these is right or are they the same cuz you know you can s all another relationship we know on top of this relationship is that cos of theta is equal to cos of theta plus 2 pi so basically you can shift the cos curve by by a, a distance of 2 pi and it's not going to change anything. So if these just simply differ by a factor of 2 pi, then it, it's not interesting. It's like whatever, they're basically the same number. But uh, you'll find if you check the difference between these two, it's not 2 pi. So what's going on? Uh, well, we'll get into that later. But now let's, now how do we ask which one of these is right? So in order to answer that, we have to look at the velocity. And if we go back to the question, the question tells us stopwatch. Da, da, da. So it tells us not only that it's not only its position that it's five centimeters below equilibrium, but it also says that it is moving upward. So that means the velocity must be positive. So we have to take these two take these two phase angles, put them into our velocity equation, and see which gives the positive velocity that the question talks about. So let's do it. And velocity is simply the distance over time, or the, the time derivative of y. And so velocity here is dy by dt. And what is y? Well, we have y from up above. And so let's take the derivative of this guy right here. So what's the derivative of that? Well, a and then inside the cos, uh, the thing multiplying the t is omega, so a omega. And then the derivative of cos is negative sine. 
So I'll just put the negative out here, and then we'll go sine of omega t plus phi. Okay, and now let's plug in for each phi and see what we get. So we have all these values, so let's plug it in. Let's now do V for, I'll call this, we'll, tr we'll call this the negative phi. So V at the negative phi, or actually first let's start with the positive phi. So V of the positive phi. So we have negative, and I'll just, you know, you don't need to work these out. We'll just say it's some number times the sine of omega times 0.2, which we actually worked out over here to be 1.578. So that's going to be when we work it out, we have a negative times a number times the sine of all this. And the sine of all this is going to give us, this is this here is going to be positive, so we're left with a negative number. So that means V with the positive phi does not give us the right answer. That phi is wrong, because it violates what the question said. And the question said that uh, below equilibrium N is moving upward, so positive velocity. Oops, there we go. So yeah, so this does not have positive velocity. So let's try V at negative phi, and hopefully that will give us the correct answer. So again, we are going to have a negative number times the sine of... Okay, and then that is going to give us a negative value for our sine. And it's going to be, we might as well work it out because we're actually going to use it. So, Okay, so negative 0.904. And actually, what's A omega? So A, we figured out from above as well, 11.7 times omega, which is 7.89. And then the value we got for this was negative So that gives us a velocity of 83.5 centimeters per second, and I'll just put it in meters per second. Okay, so we determined that this was the correct phase angle. And this is the actual velocity. And then we're finished the problem. So now, good stuff. We made a lot of progress here. 
So now let us look at the Coase problem and a little explanation as to why that is. So the issue that arises is when we have to do a Coase inverse. And so let us examine exactly what we're doing when we do a Coase inverse and what our calculator is doing. Uh, and that would be this, uh, actually this step right here. So here's where all bets are off and uh, things change. So let's take a look at that. Okay. So the cosine curve, if this is our x axis, this is negative x. then our cosine curve looks like this. So basically, if we ask cos for, if we give cos a value of x, it gives us back a value of y. That's how cos works. So how does cos inverse work? Well, cos inverse is the inverse of this. Basically, you switch your, your x with your y and your y with your x. And so that looks like this, then. So we're going to swap it. This is going to be the old positive x. Now going to go here. This is the old negative x. And this is going to be the old positive y and the old negative y. And so cos inverse looks like this. So this is what cos inverse would look like. However, in a calculator, let's say you give the calculator this value right here, so um, 0.5, okay, and then you ask for a y value is typically what you do. So you give it this value, well, is it going to give you this value here? Or is it going to give you this value here? Or how about this one? Or this one? Well, each of these values are equally likely or are equally valid. So what does the calculator do? Well, the calculator cuts off everything except for what's in that purple box that I've just drawn there. And it defines this as the new cos inverse function. And so any points that lie outside of this, even though they describe different parts of the curve, they are excluded. So we type in our cos inverse, and it gives us this value here when in fact it should have given us this value here. And how do these values differ? Well, if we bring them back to our original curve, those are like the points here and here. Where, well, this point right here, if this is in simple harmonic motion, if this is displacement, um, if this is displacement as a function of time, at this point here, the, the velocity of the block is negative. The block is on its way down. Then it's going to go back up, and it's going to go back down. If, however, we had selected this point, the velocity is up. So the block is on its way up before it makes its way down, and up and down, and up and down. So that's how those two points differ. And that's why uh, we have to use that little mathematical trick that the cos of theta is equal to the cos of negative theta. And that trick, instead of limiting ourselves to this purple box, now opens up and we're looking at this blue box where we can look at a, a whole other range of possibilities. And the same thing applies for the sine function, except uh, for the sine function, the sine of negative theta is equal to the negative sine of theta. So you apply this relationship, should they give you a, a cos curve, should they give you a sine curve instead of a cos curve when doing simple harmonic motion. And that's how you guys do it. Thanks for your patience. This is the first time I've uh, put together one of these videos. So definitely feedback would be awesome. Whether you liked it, you hate it, you thought I should go faster at some, ports, uh, some parts, slower to others. Um, yeah, any feedback would be amazing. Thanks, guys. I hope it helps.